This video tutorial is for Year 6, Theme Communication, Unit You Can Help, and this is video 3. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a step-by-step -step help guide using Microsoft Word and the snipping tool. So as you can see on my screen, I have two windows open. I have um, Each of them are a Microsoft Word document, and the reason for that is this Word document is going to be my step-by-step -step guide, and what I'm going to do in this step-by-step -step guide is show you how to insert a table in Microsoft Word. So that's the reason why I have another window of Microsoft Word open. So in this window, I'm actually going to carry out the steps to create a table. And in this window, I'm going to actually create the step-by-step -step guide. So for example, if you're showing a step-by-step -step guide of how to do something in Microsoft PowerPoint, what you might do is have one window open ready to create the step-by-step -step guide and then your other window might be for example Microsoft PowerPoint so you might do something like this so this window is ready to create the step-by-step -step guide and in this window this is where I will actually do the print screens of me using uh, Microsoft PowerPoint uh, but like I said what I'm going to do in this video tutorial is show you how to create the step-by-step -step guide itself and my step-by-step -step guide is going to be on how to insert a table. So as you can see um, in the step-by-step -step guide itself I've started off with the title that's always extremely important because you need to let the user or the person who's reading this step-by-step -step guide know what it is that you are showing them. So help guide how to insert a table. I'm going to make that bold I'm going to change the font size to 18 and I might underline it as well because that's going to be my title. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to press enter on the keyboard and then I'm going to use a subheading and I'm going to call this step one and then going to change the size of that to a, a smaller font size such as 16 and take the underline off. So you can clearly see that my heading stands out because I've made it bold, a large font with an, underli uh, with an underline. And then I need to make my subheading stand out as well. So I've just made that uh, bold and slightly bigger than the font I'm going to use to write the instructional text. So after that, I'm going to press enter again. Um, and this is actually where I'm going to write the first uh, piece of instructional text. So I'm going to take the bold off that instructional text and I'm going to have it at font size 14. So you can see if I just write something uh, for an example, Uh, you can see that my title stands out because it's bold and underlined, my subheading stands out because it's bold, and this is going to be my main text. So it's got some nice clarity of uh, how to read this document um, in a in a step by step manner. All right, so I'm ready to show the user um, of this help guide what the first step is. So what I like to do first is I like to go and uh, take the print screens first so I know what my instruction will be. So if I'm going to show the user how to insert a table, the first thing that I do is I go to insert and I take a print screen of this so that I can show the user that I've gone to the insert uh, tab on the ribbon. And so I'll go and open up my snipping tool. And what I'll do is rather than take a, a snip of the whole screen like that, I'll just focus on this little bit here, just to show them. I might just take that much. So that's that's the snip that I want to do. That's the screenshot that I want to put into my help guide. And what I might do if I've got the snipping tool uh, software open is I might just use the pen tool to draw a circle around this button because in my instructional text I'm going to say click on the insert tab at the top. Okay so what I'll then, what I'll then do is click on the copy button, go back into my step by step guide and for now all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste that into here like that. Now what I like to do when I create my step by step guides is I like to have the text on the left and then the picture on the right. You can lay that out however you like. I mean, some people might want to 
um, write the text above the picture. So um, click on the insert tab at the top. Um, some people might want to do that, but like I said, what I like to do is I like to have the writer and then the picture on the right. So in order to do that, I need to click on the picture and I need to look for a tool in the formatting tab here that looks like this. It's got a little dog on it, text wrapping. And what I need to do is I need to change this image so that it is square to the text, like that. Now I've done that, I can now move this picture to wherever I like. So I'm just going to put the picture here, like that. Okay, so I've got my text on the left and I've got my picture on the right. Step one, click on the insert tab at the top. Now something else I like to do when I do my step-by-step -step guides is actually make the keywords in the instructional text bold. So click is an instructional word and then the actual um, tab that I want you to click on I will make that bold as well. So click on the insert tab at the top. Okay so once I've done that I'm going to go to the next line in my document by clicking on the end of the first line and pressing enter. I'm going to click on it a few times until my flashing cursor is underneath uh, the picture here. Okay, and then I'm going to write step two. And what I need to do there is make that bold and make it font size 16. So it's exactly like this one. And then I'm going to press enter. I'm going to take off the bold, make it font size 14, and then I'm ready to uh, start writing my next bit. So what will I actually tell them to do next? So what I'll tell them to do next is I'll tell them to click on this table button like this. And you'll notice that I've got a problem now because what I want to do, when I've clicked on this table button, I want to show them that you move your cursor over the number of columns and rows that you want to insert in a table like that. Now my problem with this is if I use the snipping tool, you can see what happens is as I move my mouse down to go and open the snipping tool software, this obviously unselects. So for this part of the step-by-step -step guide, I'm not going to be able to use the snipping tool. Okay? Uh, again, I'll just illustrate why. Because when I get the snipping tool selected and press new, you can see that I'm no longer um, selecting this table option. And because my mouse needs to be on this table option in order for it to be active. And because I'm using the uh, snipping tool, it can't be. So for this one, instead of using the snipping tool, I'm just going to press the print screen button on my keyboard. Okay, so I'm just going to do that now. Okay, I pressed the print screen button on my keyboard, which has taken a print screen of exactly what's on my screen right now. So if I go back into here and I right click and press paste, you can see that it's put the print screen of my um, page onto this document. Now, what you can also notice is that I don't actually want this bit down the left here because remember, print screen takes a picture of the whole of your screen. And when I took the print screen, it looked like this. Okay, so I can still see this window down on the left hand side. Now, I don't want that. So what I need to do is click on the picture, go to the formatting tab at the top, and you're going to be looking for this tool, which is the crop tool. Click on that. And then what you can do is you can crop away parts of the screen, that, uh, parts of the picture that you don't want. So if I just go over to these little black lines, you'll see my cursor change. I can click there, drag across, and it won't resize the picture. It'll crop it. It will get rid of that bit that I don't want. Okay? And then I need to take off this cropping tool and then I might just resize the picture. Remember your pictures don't want to be too big because you'll not get a lot of them on one page but they don't need to be too small either otherwise the user won't be able to see them. So I think that's probably maybe just a little bit too small so I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. I think something like that I think the user can clearly see that. Again what I need to do is go to the format tab press on text wrapping and click on square so that I can now move this picture to wherever I want. 
and then here where I'm about to write my instructions I will write click on the table icon and select the number of columns and rows you want in your table. Okay, so that's a nice instruction. I'm going to highlight my keywords again. Click table and select the number of columns and rows you want in your table. I think that's good for step two. And then all you would do is you'd continue doing that until you've managed to create your help guide. So again, if we just have a look over this, you can see that I've got some nice layout and structure to the help guide. It's got a nice clear title, which I've made bold and underlined. I've got clear steps. Okay, if you want, you could even change the color of these to make them stand out even more. Step one, step two. That makes them stand out even more, which looks really nice. I've got some nice clear pictures that uh, illustrate the instructional text. And I've not made those pictures too big and I've not made them too small, which is perfect. And again, I would keep going with this step-by-step -step guide until I finish showing you what I want to show you. Uh, but for, for now, I'm going to stop this video tutorial because I think you clearly understand how to lay out uh, a step-by-step -step help guide. Okay, good luck.